every time today also we will discuss the wonderful words of bhagwan sri ramakrishna but just before that i'd like to inform you of course most of you know that our very long standing very close devotee birbala desai ji she passed away the sunday today we attended her funeral and she was lying peacefully and her whole life was dedicated for the service that is really excellent may i request you to stand up and for one minute pray for her life goes on it never stop the this world this universe when it was created we do not know there are so many different opinions and this individual life how many times we have come that also we do not know how many times again we will have to come that too is not known to us it is going on but we have come to know from the teachings of the great souls that there is an end and how to end it by knowing our source the moment we come to know from where we are coming there it ends right from the confluence of the ganga and the ocean be a bengal if you go on following the ganga upward towards north you will end up in one place gangotri where from the ganga is started at that over there the ganga stops so like that if we go back to our source what is the spiritual life going back to our source and how we go there are so many different ways paths means teachings are there and according to our attitudes we follow some with emotional devotional path is the best for them some little intellectual so they follow the path of gyana discrimination vichara some they work they work they work for others with love and without expecting any return they also go back to the same source and some they withdraw and they meditate and this is the reason the ramakrishna mission founder swami vivekananda of course with the blessings of bhagwan sri ramakrishna and ma sarada the motto they have given you have seen that our symbol all the four yogas combine and that is called samannaya vada and bhagwan sri ramakrishna again and again giving the importance on realizing this atman this god now let us start with this mantra which says tava katha roop amrita amrit means the nectar there's a conception there's a sort of a liquid as if that if you drink then you become immortal but nothing to nothing like that it is the knowledge the moment you know that 
this body, this mind, behind this is the consciousness. And if you can reach to that consciousness and can understand that consciousness, you will see the same consciousness which is within us, within me, the individual, the jiva. It is in every being, everywhere. That is the last knowledge and that is called Vedanta. So we will follow the steps and slowly, slowly Sri Ramakrishna is taking us to the, our different ways. We will read here, we will understand. Let us chant. Tavu katham ritam Tapta jivanam Kavi viriritam Kalma shapaham Shravana mangalam Shri Madatatam Bhubi Grinanti E Bhuri Dajana Just by hearing, by reading, by discussing these wonderful words, words of spirituality, you will get all those merits which other people they acquire by donating a huge, huge property or doing many other good works just by reading this book. Why? Then our idea about the spiritual life becomes very clear. And Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is telling everyone is going towards God, knowingly or unknowingly. He never said that, oh, you are not going and somebody cannot go. Everyone is going towards God. This is very important. They will all realize Him if they have sincerity and longing of heart. The moment we are having the sincerity, the strong desire that I am going to realize God, whatever path I follow, whatever language I use, whatever the ways, I will reach over there. And that is the ultimate goal. Sri Ramakrishna is very confident. But why we unnecessarily, and this is in the world, human history, if you see, the main conflict is religion. Religion is supposed to be the source of joy, happiness, brotherhood, fraternity. But instead, the religion has become the source of all conflicts. Why? Because we misunderstand. Why you misunderstand? Our ego. We interpret in this way. All others are bad. And they should have no right to stay with us. Very wrong. And that is the reason ultimately we understand we have only gone back instead of going forward. So that is why Sri Ramakrishna is telling all scriptures, Vedas, Puranas, Tantras, he is not mentioning about the other scriptures, but he mentioned all scriptures then, Veda, Tantra and Purana. Mostly those who are following the path of Jnana, they don't like the path of Bhakti. If people are praying or in the emotional way, talking, singing, dancing in the name of God, they will laugh. Oh, these people don't know anything, or fools. There's a great wrong thing. So that is the reason he is mentioning the Vedas. To whom he is telling? To Master Mahasaya. Who is the Master Mahasaya? He is the representative of the young people in those days. They all were very much inclined to the Brahma Samaj. And it was the Brahma Samaj was the mixture of Jnana and Bhakti. This is to say the God has no form. Because of the strong propagation of the Christianity, God can never have the form. They also followed that. And then they said, no, but we have to pray. And so the prayer also mixed up in that. So like that, they were almost like imitating the Christianity they were going. And young people, educated people, all were influenced by that particular thought in those days. That's the Brahma Samaj. Sri Ramakrishna knew that Master Moshe is also having the relation with that 
uh, ideology. So he is mentioning Vedas. That means the path of Veda is combined everything, Puranas and the Tantras. Seek Him, H capital, alone and no one else. Only that one. Now he says, Satchidananda. I am reading from the page 423. The, this is the Satchidananda, that is actually the indication of the Brahman. As because Brahman is all pervading consciousness, and because we cannot conceive that consciousness in that way, it is all pervading. How we can do it at the best? Sometimes in the Vedic meditation, we feel that we are the light. And we are not the body, we are not the mind and all this that you, we are staying here. All melts away in that light and we are light, light everywhere. Even that, even that also is having something to hold on, that is the light. Sometimes we are meditating on the Om, Om Iti Brahma. So that Omkar is also having the form. Om is not the Brahma. Is only helping us to anchor our mind on something. So, such chit ananda sarupa, it say like this existence, knowledge, and bliss absolute. Existence, we know that we like to leave, all the time we like to leave. So many people today gathered in that funeral ceremony, and one of our very close and she was lying down as a dead body. None of us felt that someday we will come and be like this. We were thinking we are all right. And that is the mystery. That's Kalmaya. You can never understand and stick to that understanding the truth that all these that we see is nothing but false. Why? Because our root is Sat. Sat means existence. There's usually the way you call Sat is called truth. And here the particular meaning is existence. So existence, the sense of existence, we don't like to die. Where from it came? From the root. What is that root? Sat. Then Chit, we always like to know what is this, what is this, what is this? Curiosity. What is the root of Vedanta? Curiosity. Inquisitiveness, that is the root of Vedanta. So when we are going on asking, questioning, trying to understand, that is the special, very special in human being. So that is called Satchit. And then ultimately what? Ananda. That Ananda means the joy. Today one Swami came, is a different uh, Hindu monk, and he is from the Maryland, West Washington, D.C. I told, what is the name of your astronaut? His Ananda. A little good. He himself is doing it. The Ananda. The goal is the Ananda. The joy. The happiness. And happiness without having anything. That is the joy. If we are having some food, we are happy. Hip, happy. If we are having the friends, we are happy. And like that, and like that, and like that, but it's all temporary. When the food will be exhausted, we are unhappy. When the friends will go away, again unhappiness. So no dependence on anything, but we are happy. How it is possible? <coughs> when I am happy with myself. So that is exactly what Sri Ramakrishna giving the hint. That which is called Satchidananda Brahman in the Vedas, called Satchidananda Shiva in the Tantra. Now he is, you know, among the Hindus there are, and in those days this were very strong differences, divisions. And even today, if you go you will see, they will never accept those who are followers of the Shiva, they will say, what God you worship? No, I got to go. Krishna. Okay, 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 go. Like that, they will never talk to you. So much proud. Our path is the best. So that way, Sri Ramakrishna is bringing the combination. He said, if you are sincere in your path, okay. You will reach over there. 
But if you are not only egoistic and thinking that I will reach over there, nothing is going to happen. You will be in the same spot. Constantly going around. So, Satchidananda Brahman in the Veda, Satchidananda Shiva in the Tantra, and again the he, he alone is called Satchidananda Krishna in the Purana. Purana means Bhagavata Purana. Bhagavata is the main Krishna's biography. The Bhagavata Purana. We are studying Bhagavata every Sunday. Most of the time different people like our Bhishma, then Bidura, then others also will go on speaking about the high Vedantic philosophy in Bhagavata. Who is Krishna? He is absolute. So that is the very, very uniqueness and we missed that always. Uniqueness in Hinduism through personal God and Goddesses we go to the impersonal being. So that what Sri Ramakrishna said and he is talking about the other things also. Sri Ramakrishna not constantly speaking about the spirituality, sometimes to ask about, hey, what you... Now he is asking Ram. Ram is a doctor. And you know the Bengali family, they never allow the male, the boys, for cooking and all. That is as if the whole thing should be for the women. So they teach the girls to how to cook, but the boy is only eating, nothing else. And criticizing maybe. So, Tasters. So anyway, so this here, Sri Ramakrishna is asking that. He is a doctor, a very famous man. He is asking the Ram, do you cook your own meals? Then naturally, Rama was hesitant. Uh, no, sir, he said. You may try it, Sri Ramakrishna is asking. You may try it. With your meals, take a little clarified butter made out of cow's milk that will purify your body and mind. So that is the way he is guiding his disciple. Why? He is a different type of person. All people will work for me and I will talk about the God. And he, Sri Ramakrishna, is asking him to help himself. So that is the way it should begin. You know, now I can understand why in our training in the monastic life, why they used to ask us to do all this work. We used to wonder, we never did all these things in the house and never they asked us to do that. But all these, the beginning you must have to do, why? To crash your ego. From the very rich family they have come, but you have to do this very menial type of work, so called menial. So naturally, ego, so Sri Ramakrishna is asking his disciple. Then he is asking about his parents. Do you love your parents? No, no, I don't like my mother particularly. And she was uh, the stepmother. Then I don't like mother. Why she comes to our house, I don't know. And etc, etc. Now slowly it came to Girindra and he is telling, Sir, suppose one's parents are guilty of a terrible crime, a heinous sin. Look at it. This is to, to learn. And this is the culture. Suppose one's parents are guilty of a terrible crime, a heinous sin. What should we do about so how we will look at your parents, Sri Ramakrishna, what if they are? You must not renounce your mother even if she commits adultery. For a son, this is the training. This is called, you have to understand, the mother has given me the birth. And mother has give, given me everything in this life. I would not, all my existence is because of this mother and the father. So I should not forget them. That's the first step of morality. Through Then next step will be the spirituality. Then he is going on telling, are the father and the mother mere trifles? No spiritual practice will bear fruit unless they are pleased. Chaitanya was intoxicated with the love of God still before taking to
to the monastic life? For how many days did he try to persuade his mother to give him her permission to become a monk? So that he is giving the example. The Chaitanya was so great. Constantly he was merged in the thought of God, but still without the permission of the mother, you cannot take. In our cases also, we had to write to mother. Then with her permission only we could join in the order. Then sometimes some people, they will go away. That was the tradition. They will go and they will hide somewhere. The parents don't know. Suddenly after 12 years or 14 years, they will appear. Nothing like the Ramakrishna mission means the moment you have come and join immediately next day, write to your parents, write to your mother. Are they willing to allow you to be monk or not? So that is the way. So we must have to. And let me say this to you, to aim. So this is the genuineness. Aim is the writer. He is noting down these points. He could simply forget this. We would not have known anything about. And Sri Ramakrishna is telling this to him only, not to other devotees. Reproachfully, he is telling to aim. And let me say this to you. Your father and mother brought you up. Yet you have left home with your wife. You have cheated your parents. You have come away with your wife and children and you feel you have become a holy man. He's telling to his that disciple, his very close disciple, the Master Masha. So this is called the guidance of a Guru. Guru always tells the truth for the benefit of the disciples. Oh, okay, it is your personal life, I have nothing to say. No, Guru will never do like that. The real Guru will guide you all the time, every moment. So what is good for you? And he is telling, your father doesn't need any money from you. Otherwise, I would have cried, shame on you. Sri Ramakrishna is telling to Master Moshe. Everybody in the room became grave and remained silent. So this is the first step of spirituality. You must have to respect your father and mother. And that is why Matri Devo Bhava, Pitri Devo Bhava, the mother is God is, Father is the God. Without practicing all these things, suddenly we go and purchase a Vivek Churamani and then we become a Vedantin. It's not so easy. So the basic thing is this. So then he is telling, a man has certain debts to pay. His <coughs> debts to God and to Rishis. And then his debts to mother, father and wife. He cannot achieve anything without paying the debt he owes to his parent. A man is indebted to his wife as well. There are people who spend verses, he quotes verses from the scripture and talk big, but in their conduct they are quite different. Ramu Prasanya, he is mentioning a name of a person, Ramu Prasanya. Constantly busy pouring opium and milk for the Hatha Yogi. You know, Hatha Yogis, those who practice the, the asanas, they call Hatha Yogi, they need this type of. Now, in those days and now also, opium is used mainly for the medicine. This yogi is there to leave completely bare body and the mosquitoes and other insects bites are there. And moreover, without that you cannot survive. I have seen in the Himalaya, just bare body and it is snowing, they are sitting over there. It is impossible without the help of this type of medicine. And for the, the pain and all those things in those days, this was the medicine they used to apply. But the Hatha Yogi is there to take to milk a lot with the opium. And this man is supplying them. And he is telling, the Sri Ramakrishna, why he is mentioning? This man is quoting the scripture. 
He said that Manu, Manu means the Manu, uh, the Hindu lawgiver, enjoins it upon man to serve the sadhu. But his old mother hasn't enough to eat. So that is how Sri Ramakrishna is observing and he is now quoting. She walks to the market to buy her own groceries. It makes me very angry. And who is Sri Ramakrishna? The God himself, the avatar, Barishta. And he is angry with whom? The person who is trying to be spiritual. And for that, the way he has adopted, ignoring his own mother, the old lady, he is going on doing something and thinking I am uh, becoming the spiritual, the God is not liking it. I am very angry. But here you have to consider another thing, then he is telling. When a man is in, intoxicated with static love of God, then who is his father or mother or wife? He forgets all relations. For him it is okay. His love of God is so intense that he becomes mad with it. Then he has no duty to perform. So then the, this question comes. The Shankaracharya, there is a tradition that Brahmacharya, Garastha, Banaprastha, Sanyas. From the 8th century BC, they say, at the time of Shankaracharya, sometimes the, the debates are there. Shankaracharya said, but the moment you feel like giving up the whole thing, strong feeling to renounce, then you are having the support of the scripture, you can live. Otherwise, you have to follow all these four stages, four stages of life. Yad hariba birajit tad hariba prabharyat. The moment you feel like giving up, viraja, viraja means giving up, and prabharjit, you go out. So that is the, again, the support of the Hindu scripture. And here he is telling like that. And Sri Ramakrishna is again giving the uh, quote, quoting from the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya had this intoxication. So he is using the word intoxication. Neshagrastha. That means he forgets everything. That is intoxication. And he says, he was not aware of hunger, of thirst, or sleep. That is called the God intoxication. All at once, Sri Ramakrishna exclaimed, because the moment he said there, Chaitanya, he immediately got that influence of Chaitanya within him. He felt like that. He stood up. And he said, ah, Chaitanya, he stood up and master to the devotees. Chaitanya means undivided consciousness. See, Chaitanya means Gauranga Mahaprabhu. The Chaitanya Dev is so famous in the, among the Hindus. And he is actually the founder of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Samaj. And now that particular school of philosophy is so strong, so powerful all over the world that uh, the Krishna consciousness, they are the follower of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All these things, but Sri Ramakrishna immediately, not the person, immediately he takes uh, our mind to completely the Supreme Being and he says, Chaitanya means undivided consciousness. The one gentleman was asking me, the moment you say Brahman is consciousness, by I search the dictionaries, but it never says like that. The God means the being and all that. And so this conscious concept of consciousness is purely Vedanti. And in the Upanishads we find this consciousness. Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam Yakincha Jagatyam Jagat. So Isha, Vasyam, they are using the word Isha. Isha means the God. But then he is covering everything. How it is possible for any being having a form to cover the each and everything? It is not possible. So how it is covering then? Consciousness. 
So consciousness naturally is that. But as because it is not possible for us to understand what is this consciousness, though we are very much and our we, our consciousness, individual consciousness, and the inertness of the body and mind, we can understand that. Even then, it is very difficult to understand actually, truly, about this consciousness all pervading. Chaitanya Jore Veche. The saturated, each and every point is nothing but that consciousness. So, this he said, Chaitanya means undivided consciousness. And to the elder Gopal, immediately is coming down. This Gopal, elder Gopal, afterwards he became the monastic member. So, this to say in Bengali, Budo Gopal. Budo means the elder. The Budo Gopal, this to say. And he says, do you intend to go on a pilgrimage now? The people have different type of desire. We have a devotee. He has already visited the very difficult uh, pilgrim center for 13 times. I think he's preparing now for the 14 times. So he, they, he always goes like that. Some people will always go. So many times they will go on counting Charidham. They will go to all these places. The Gangotri, Yamunotri, Kedar and Badri, the Charidham. Once you go it is okay. But some people feel like that, they will go. And this Gopal, senior Gopal, he said, do you intend to go to pilgrimage now? Gopal said, yes sir. I should like to wander about a little. Because in the mind, they like to have the practice of spirituality. So in thinking this way. Ram, the doctor, now he is telling to Gopal. He means the master. Sri Ramakrishna says that one becomes a Kuti Chakra. This is a Sanskrit word, Kuti Chakra. After being a Bahu Daka. Bahu Udaka. Udaka means the water. Bahu means many. A man is going on visiting different pilgrim center and going on drinking water in different places. So Udaka, the water, he is drinking in many different places. So Bahu Udaka. Bahu means many. And Kuti Chakra, he is sitting in one place. So this is the two difference. The people will go on visiting different places and then ultimately they will come and sit. The sadhu that visits many holy places is called Bahudaka. He whose craving for travel has been satisfied and who sits down in one place is called Kuti Chakra. He is explaining Sri Ramakrishna to the Gopal and other devotees. As long as a man feels that God is there, he is ignorant. But he attains knowledge when he feels that God is here. So there and here. Sometimes we go to the temple and we all sprinkle Ganga water and then we bathe and put on the wash clothes and then only go to the temple and thinking this is the holy place. Of course it's the holy place because constantly the God's name are there. But God is not only there, God is everywhere. That we have to understand. God is in every being, God is everywhere. Slowly, slowly we have to understand that. When you go, we, as a student, we go to the school or colleges, we go to the laboratory and that is the place where we practice all these different type of tests and there is a science class. But in our life, every day, the science is there, every moment, everywhere. Something is happening, it must have a cause. That is the science. You go to the root, we understand that. That is science. Vishesha Jnana, Big Jnana. So what is that Big Jnana? Special knowledge. What is the special knowledge? Understanding the cause of it. Why the wind is blowing? There must be a cause. And why the wind is not blowing, there must be a cause. So everything has a cause. And this cause and effect we can understand, we discover many things. 
The one man was sitting under an apple tree, they say it is apple tree, and it fell down and then he thought, why it is coming down? Why it has not gone up? So he started searching out the cause and he discovered law of gravity. And that is the way we always, from the nature, so many things happen. A man is so kind, so good, so gentle, suddenly one day he misbehaves. Why? Something must have happened. Instead of immediately reacting, if we go back and then try to understand his mind, and then he will come to know something is disturbing that man. He is part of, but he cannot share that anxiety to others, with others. So that is agitating him. Anything happens immediately, he blurs up. In our society, most of the time, the husbands, they will come back and then the only person they can shout is the wife. So they will go on shouting. Of course, nowadays, wives are also shouting back. So now it's almost the balance. Why are they really, why? Because in the bosses, in the offices, they are in all these places, the poor man cannot do anything. When he comes back, he wants to express that anxiety. He's not anger for that particular person. It's the anxiety that he was suffering, he's just letting it out. If you understand it, you are a very good person, very good friend. Immediately if you strike back, you break the whole relation. That we have to understand. Swami Vivekananda said, the nature is provoking you to react, to react, to react. Don't do that. Be the master of your nature. There's so many people that are telling so many ways and criticizing or praising, doing this and doing that. You must control. And that is called the spirituality. And this way, slowly, as long as a man feels God is there, is ignorant, but he attains knowledge when he feels that God is here. Then he is telling a story. And at the moment, any advice is there, he will tell the story. Why? We understand the story and remember the story. And through the story, it becomes very clear. He says a man wanted to smoke, and he went to a neighbor uh, to light his charcoal. It was the dead of night and the household was asleep. After he had knocked a great deal, someone came down to open the door. At sight the man, he asked, Hello, what's the matter? The man replied, Can't you guess? You know how fond I am of smoking. I have come here to lit my charcoal, the neighbor said. Ha ha! You are a fine man indeed. You took the trouble to come and do all this knocking at the door. Why? You have a lighted lantern in your hand. The man was carrying the lantern and he forgot. So that is exactly what happens. We go on searching. The recently, I was in a, one of the TV advertisement, the commercial advertisement. And it was very nicely they put it. One lady, she is going out in the office and sees, she was going on searching for her glasses. And then after, after searching many places, she didn't find, then one requested her husband to help her to find it. And husband immediately saw the glasses are on, the, on her own head, it is there. And the son was also with the husband, both of them, they looked at each other and Okay, we can help you only if you promise that when you come back you will bring so and so such thing for us. She said, yeah, when I am coming back from my office, we will purchase and bring it. No, you have to promise keeping your hand on your head. <laughs> and when she kept the hand on her head and it was there. So like that, we go on searching for God and then the Guru says, okay, I can do that. But only thing, you have to withdraw your mind from outside and to go down. It's not the Guru that helping. It's not the scripture that helping. Only guiding. Who is doing it? The I. The person who is trying to do it. I am striving to control my 
all the senses. By that way we always go down and suddenly one day I see what my Guru saw. And then the Supreme Guru also saw the same thing. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, you see that moon? Everyone has saw this moon. Right from the Vedic age, then the Buddha, the Shankaracharya, everyone saw this moon only. So when you look at the moon immediately if I feel, oh, if they have seen this moon and same thing and they became Buddha, they became Shankaracharya, they became Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, why not me? And that gives the strength. I am also going to be like that. What a man sees is very near him, still he wanders about from place to place. Then he is telling Sri Ramakrishna another uh, this uh, chapter is coming, 22nd chapter, advice to an actor. It is Saturday, May 24, 1884. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the small couch in his room. Rakhal, Aim, several other devotees were present. A special worship of Kali had been performed in the temple the previous night. In connection, with the worship, a theatrical performance of the Vidya Sundar had been staged in the Nath Mandir. Here all Hindu temple is having the Garbha Mandir and the Nath Mandir. Sanctum Sanctorium, the Garbha Mandir and always Nath Mandir. And Nath Mandir actually cultural place. There the debate and the conversation, the music, the dance and theatrical performances all they used to have over there, the social gathering. And that is the reason that after, in those days, when people used to actually die in their own houses or the birth used to take place in their own houses, the system is you are not supposed to come to the temple. That is the reason. Because the bacteria and all those, if you come, then you, you may spread that the same thing among the villagers or the people will be gathering over there. So that is the reason they say 11 days, 13 days, 15 days, sometimes 21 days, barring those family members not to come to the temple. But now everything is happening in the hospital. And maybe sometimes a relative is passing away in India, thousands of miles away. But still, they follow that same rule. You are not supposed to come. It is not necessary. So we have to understand according to the situation, these things changes. This has nothing to do with the religion. Here the Siddhanta Krishna, he was sitting and the theatrical performance was over. The master to the actor, the actor came to meet the Siddhanta Krishna to take his blessings. Your acting was very good. If a person excels, and this is the very important, if a person excels in singing, music, dancing, or any other act, he can also quickly realize God provided he strives sincerely. Why? Because in anything, if he excels, that means he made his mind completely concentrated on that particular subject either dance or music or reading or anything it becomes totally concentrated and very sharp and that same focus if it goes to God it will be very easy for him to realize God that's why some now and then when I meet the Indian diaspora here in different places I always say you people can realize God very easily why? Almost all of you are very, very intelligent. Much higher level than many others. And you have been successful in your life. Now the same concentration with which you have become successful in your life, that you have to turn towards God. That's all. It's the same mind, in the same light, focusing that same light, I am seeing something if I turn that light somewhere else, I will see something else. The light is the same, focus is the same, mind is the same, concentration is the same. 
That's why Sri Ramakrishna is telling, as an ordinary actor, but Sri Ramakrishna is inspiring, you have this quality. And to acquire this quality, you know, in those days, they used to sing themselves. It is not. Nowadays, the movie artist, they'll be only leaping. They are not singing at all. Somebody else is singing. But these people, they used to sing themselves. And moreover, and the camera they will be placing in such a way that even a, you know, I saw one, a lady, she was an actress in Delhi airport. And in the movies, she used to look so good. But in the reality, when she came, I looked at her as, oh my God, if, it's like that. So anyway, this, you can hide many things in this nowadays movie. But in those days, it was all, all around people will be sitting and looking at you and judging you, watching you. So obviously they were really good people, the good actors. So Sri Ramakrishna is pointing to him in that way. Ah, then he is asking to him, just as you practice much in order to sing, dance or play on instrument, so one should practice the art of fixing the mind on God. And this is the practical teachings how to control the mind. So we were practicing so much when the examination approaches, people used to get up early morning, they'll be studying till del the dead night and again they will get up and they forget eating food and like that and when they are successful oh now I will go and enjoy the similarly the same way I have come to realize God and I must have to put my mind into that if we can do it it is so easy that's why Sri Ramakrishna is telling and he is telling one should practice regularly such disciplines as worship, japa and meditation. Sometimes worship is not possible when as we do over here, it's not possible to do all the time. But mental worship is possible. Manasa puja, they call it. And sometimes if you have the time, now the people are so busy, they will spend only five minutes, then only they will go. So if you have the time, if you are sitting and then thinking that I am actually washing the feet of the God and then garlanding, then burning the incense sticks, lighting the lamp and bringing the food for the God and doing the arati, all these things mentally if you do, you will forget the whole world and you will be immersed in that activity. And that way, constantly, since you are doing the, those activities, it will purify your mind. The Gani who is constantly going on telling, I am pure, I am pure, I am pure. But the Bhakta is very easy because the mind needs activity and I am giving the mind the same activity, but the activity will help me to purify my mind. How? Because the worldly thoughts won't be there. So that is what Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Then taking the name of Lord, Japa, and meditation, concentrating on the same object, just so. Then he is asking, are you married? Any children? The man said, yes, sir. I had a girl who died. Another child has been born. Now the master, ah, a death and a birth. And also going on. A death and a birth. That is the chakra. It goes on and on and on and on. It never ends. Only human being can stop it by knowing who am I. Why did I stay to watch your performance? Sri Ramakrishna is telling him. Why did I stay to watch your performance? Now two things he is telling. I found the rhythm, the music and the melody all correct. Look at it. The God appreciate only perfection. So we don't think that it is Ramakrishna. Think it is God. The God only appreciate perfection. One person, he was going on singing and his voice was terrible. 
and other people they were plugging their ears and they're going to the temple coming out then one person he went and told sir why you were singing hey i'm singing for god then he said we are disturbed and do you think god will be happy god is very fine so obviously you must be perfect and this perfection that is god and that's why in the ramakrishna mission the training is whatever you do you must be perfect and Swami Vivekananda said, my motto, perfect and fast. And to bring the perfection, the thing that I can do in one day, I will take one month. No, that won't do. Perfection means perfect and the fast. Friends, why I am telling this? These are the steps to proceed towards spirituality. We do not really understand this. And particularly, something in our mind and we are so indisciplined. Where we sit, we forget sometimes this and that. And where we go and open our shoes, God forbid, we will sometimes take somebody's shoes and go away. There's a great problem It happens. If you go down and see in the, that our, the shoe room and all, so many days for almost a year, the coats are hanging, the hats are over there, the bags are there. People forgot and never came back. It is all lying over there. And they think that they will realize God with this mind. The mind so much scattered, can't remember that I am not having my coat. So these are the first steps to prepare our mind. Otherwise you won't be. These are the very simple words as if a very very important words then one person is telling uh, second he said why did i stay to watch your performance i found the rhythm the music and the melody all correct second he said then the divine mother showed me that it was god alone who acted in the performance in the roles of the players this is called spiritual way of looking at things now we see so many things but if we can turn it into spirituality god who has dressed in these different forms and he is acting and playing and dancing and singing you are looking at that performance but actually meditating on god this is the speciality so the spiritual way of looking at things and at the same time going for the perfection these are the two objects the two, two ways we can always practice then actor is asking sir what is the difference between karma and kamana last and desire what is the difference between the last and the desire friends i was searching the answer to this question to the all knowing google <laughs> and he failed. Google also could not give the answer to this question. And now Sri Ramakrishna is giving, as in English they say, Pat came the answer. Immediately he is giving the answer. Last is like the root of the tree. And desires are branches and twigs. So that this last that goes down within us. So we must have to be very, very careful. I just read these small, the teachings of Ramakrishna and we aim. One cannot completely get rid of the six passions. And he's giving the name first, last, anger, greed, and the like. The six passions, they are our enemies. And the shortlisted, Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, shortlisted this six into two. What? Kama Esha Krodha Esha. Thank you. Kama Esha Krodha Esha. And this is Kama. This is the last. And when that is not satisfied, Immediately the Krodha, anger. And these are Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Rajoguna Samudbhava. 
then second line it says maha ashana maha papma they are the complete sinful things and maha ashana very very dangerous maha ashana maha papma bidinna iha boirinam you must understand these are your enemies a man cannot see god unless he gives his whole mind to him the mind is wasted on many other things thank you friends thank you for coming we will continue the discussion about and quoting from the different scriptures when the sri ramakrishna said a man cannot see god unless he gives up the whole mind to him how the others yoga varshishta and mahabharata and other scriptures how they are supporting it so we will discuss that in our next class let us conclude with this shloka niranjanam nityam niranjanam nityam ananta roopam ananta roopam bhaktanukampa bhaktanukampa drita vigraham vai ishavataram ishavataram parameshamityam Ram Krishna Ram Krishna Shirasa Namaha Shirasa Namaha Om Shanti Namastu Namastu